Tell me when we're, you hold her just for a second here and I'll come get her. Okay. Her All right, right, we're live. Him, no. him. We're live. Yes, we are. Well, hello, folks. Uh, David Gross with Kindy Systems back with you to share a little bit of our recipe for sublimation success. And of course, always with us, uh, the, the genius, the brain around here. Sprite, how are you today? I'm good, David. How are you? I think I've thrown Sprite for a few curves today. And I'd like to start off with the first curve. Let me just make a little room here. Make sure we can silence. All right, you guys are in for yeah, a treat. We got a, hey, Robert. Hey, Jennifer. All right, we'll give everybody just a minute. But um, I'm here. Brian, how are you today? I'm hey, Mom. Okay. All right, we have a special guest. All right, ready? Here we go. You guys get the <laughs> All right, this is Darren. <gasps> Darren, okay. Darren is a 12-week-old uh, uh, St. Bernard half um, Newfoundland. And um, he is this uh, best personality. And so I thought I'd bring him in with um, all our new pet products, which there's only, you know, we'll do something for him. But Baron is, just look at that personality, how, how great that is. We did do a uh, pet pack for him, which um, would be a little hard to zoom in, but you can see it sort of right here. Um, and uh, why he just takes to this, doesn't he? So a little pet tag here. I think it's just a round one, Baron. Um, and uh, so, um, you know, no, no animals were harmed in the filming of this, right? Well, not yet, at least. Not yet. No. So, um, you you Baron was going to, um, we were going to make him, what are we going to make him? We're going to make him the Pet Scarf 03, P-E-T-S-C-A-R-F 03. This is our large pet scarf for the large boy. Now, Baron, when he grows up, um, he will be definitely the biggest thing around. I got to see his father, um, and it's huge. Uh, one of our folks that works at Condi had a uh, litter, and uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, get one of them. And, um, wow. What do you think about this? This reminds me a little bit of my dad because my dad was veterinarian. This would be like his little, little um, examination table. Um, good boy. So um, it has, has a great personality. But, you know, it goes back to uh, what we've talked about before on these live broadcasts that, um, that uh, there's a lot of money, uh, opportunities for selling products into the pet market. Uh, one of my favorite is to partner with a pet groomer where um, when they bring the dog in, um, you can have a little display at the pet groomer of a handful of products so that uh, folks can pick them out. And so usually um, it's going to be for maybe a, a photograph of a, a deceased pet. Um, like we, for instance, we have a golden retriever that passed away, um, I guess, um, Two years ago, thereabouts, uh, and so we would you know, have that photograph. So you would just make a deal with the pet groomer, um, cut them a little the profit. They become your hired sales force. We refer to that as a sort of a wholesale distribution uh, model. And then, of course, um, you know you could expand that to all sorts of ways. Work with um, um, you know on a on a fundraising kind of situation uh, with dog parks, um, all sorts of things get involved in those to help people, um, you know, introduce a little pet tag for them. Uh, he likes it. Oh, he really does. And you notice I made it orange and blue. There we go. There you go. <laughs> um, and so uh, my family, we're, we're, we're in this part of the world, we refer to it as the house divided. I went to Auburn. And my wife is for Alabama. And, um, She's the smart one. 
Um, it was she definitely the smart one. There, there's no doubt about that. Um, she got the brains in the family. <laughs> don't eat the don't eat the rules. <laughs> um, she got the brains. This is going to be so, the best live ever. At any rate, the pet market I think is an extremely um, healthy business to get into um, because everybody um, loves to um, spend money on their pet and. Um, Darren is certainly no, uh, no exception to that. Um, so unlike the cobbler, children has no shoes. Um, and uh, Todd, you want to take a picture of this one of these days? Yes. Todd made for me the, uh, the pet tag and did a great job. I think you do that. And by the way, you can't see Todd. He's, he's sort of in front of us. But um, Todd, uh, <laughs> congratulations on your 20th. Uh, anniversary here at Condi. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, uh, we appreciate that. Todd works in our, our graphics department, uh, trade show catalog. Um, he's the uh, Swiss Army knife around here. Okay. So Martha says, watch us right. He signs your check. And, and kind of Monica really is the one that signs the checks. So, <laughs> you know, she's, she's the boss. Monica's <laughs> my, my better half. His paws are huge. Paws are huge. Come, his whole paw fits in my hand. Yeah, it will come yeah. very, very large. Great personality. Okay, what, are you doing the second time? I'm just playing with the dog. Yes, I'm doing the okay. second side. <laughs> I'm doing the second side. So questions, uh, any questions about the pet market? Um, Not kind yet. Of stuff. So great market to get into. Uh, you can sell at very attractive prices. Um, there's a lot of products, but the I think the best pet products are those that you sell to the owner, not not necessarily for the pet, but there's a lot of pet products from um, our new next generation dog collar is out. I think he um, likes it. Oh yeah, next generation dog collar is out. Um, it gives you um, a really consistent um, substrate transfer area because it's, it's a piece of fabric that's actually sewn to the um, the actual collar. Um, well, buddy, I hope I got you big enough. <laughs> it won't be big. It won't be big enough soon. Um, he really is growing at an exponential rate. Alarming rate. So, All right. He's just an amazing personality. I wonder if it's even going to fit on. Well, he's got so Spry has a bunch of critters as well, <clears throat> and. Um, oh yeah. Her uh, assembled news team. Oh, news team assembled. News team assembled. <laughs> right. Uh, what do you think, Nikki? Bear. <laughs> okay. Are you recording? Yeah. 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 Well, Look at them. We come in and say, "Hey, Nikki." <laughs> Everything working okay, Chris? On um, absolutely. YouTube? All right. Wow, we've got the whole office coming by to say hey right. today. So let's put the um, bandana. And what do you call this? This is a pet scarf. Pet scarf. So, Aaron. So that's beautiful. So we're going to say goodbye to Baron and Bye, buddy. Uh, we're going to get to business here. All right, fun so, over. Yep, 30 plus pounds, I'm sure. Um, so, Baron. Bye, buddy. Bye, buddy. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, dear, thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 Yeah, All right. Okay. So next week um, we're going to be at the NBM show in um, Irving, Texas. Irving, Texas. Uh, the show is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Our class is Thursday at 8 a.m. I believe. I said last week it was Friday, but it's actually Thursday. I think we've had an amazing number of people sign up for it. Hopefully, we'll be part of it. But if you um, uh, so show the classes there's a number of great classes um, that go to show so please if you're in that area check them out um, and uh, if you want to see sort of a little bit of classes if you go to condi.com forward slash nbm that's nancy boy mary so condi.com forward slash nbm that's where i have uh, posted a lot of resources and i think somewhere in there um, or maybe on Condi TV, I've got an old recording, old video recording of my class, but it's a best practices class. Um, okay. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing.
doing now. I think everybody's sad. Oh yeah, sorry. I saw. Uh, I want to squish him. I saw. Tell me you're not trying to sublimate the dog. Um, <laughs> there's a bunch of a bunch of comments. I don't think. I think, I like think uh, on April 1st um, we're going to roll out our sublimation tattoo product, and so it only hurts until you stop the you know remove the. I've beach. already got a couple of them. So um, no big deal. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't hurt that bad. You know, just third degree burns. Just kidding, folks. No, do not put no, put please. your. Uh, Body parts in the heat press. That hopefully, would be bad. hopefully you know that. Um, okay, let's see. So not only are we going to Irving, Texas next week, um, we are also we have a couple webinars coming up. Uh, April the 9th at 3 p.m. Central Time, we have Sawgrass. They're going to be doing the tips for home business operations. So it's understanding the challenges of using your home as a business location, as well as some creative solutions of overcoming them. Um, what else? Vicky, I hate Victoria. Victoria's watching. Victoria, hey, you just missed Baron. So David's daughter is watching now, and we just took the dog off, so go figure. Um, we also have another webinar April the 30th at 3 p.m. Central Time with ASI, and that is how to expand your sublimation business into the healthcare market. So that's how to target the, target the healthcare market, revenue potential of the market, who to tar target, hottest products, how ASI helps you tap into the market, overview and benefits of the membership. So Yeah, the, the quick thing is ASI stands for Advertising Specialist Institute. There are a number of organizations that specialize in helping folks tap into promotional products. ASI is the oldest and um, I suspect the largest. Um, other organizations may be familiar with their PPAI, SAGE, and so um, the reason is I've had a number of people ask over the years is, okay, how do I fulfill a, a order that was given to me of a large amount of something, um, not necessarily sublimation, it might be screen printed, pad printed, um, but being connected with the promotional product suppliers is, um, is a little bit of what ASI does. So, again, I figured that the more knowledgeable you are about what's available to you to grow your business the better off you are. All right. Um, we have a quick question. Yeah. So Julia asks, or she says, I'm currently selling wholesale to the Humane Society so they can sell retail and make a profit. What do you recommend as a formula for selling wholesale? Well, what I would say is that in general, um, pick a um, sale price of what the market will bear for a product, depending on what it is and how you're decorating it and, and who it's being sold to. Um, and then for, for a situation like this, go above, you know, raise the price a little bit above that um, because it is for a charitable organization. And then um, potentially discount the product to them 30%. Um, and, and I think that formula will work they'll make more money than they, they probably typically expected or typically would. Um, if you're selling to like a boutique or something, um, then they're expecting you to, if whatever sell price is, the, their cost would be half that. So the product that they were selling, let's say it's $30, then they're expecting to buy it from you for 15. Um, so, you know, they're, they're just doubling the, the cost. And so that's why it's so important to pick the right products for wholesale uh, fulfillment, products that will bear, you know, uh, a, a markup of say 100%. Um, a good example would be, you know, for instance, the um, Unisub Chromelux bracelets. Uh, those products are very inexpensive to produce, you know, a little over a dollar. Um, in retail, they could easily sell for $25 or $30, uh, depending on the store and depending on the artwork. All right. Um, you're making me nervous with this oven, so I'm going to move it a little further away from you to see if yeah. you're going to touch it. Probably will. Here, you want your notes? Yeah, thank you. Cool. All right. Okay, what we're going to do. All right. So, I know a lot of you, a lot of you, a lot of you saw the video that I did earlier this week about our new products. Great job, by the way. Well, oh, thank you, sir. That's, that's what I'm paid to do. Well, in addition to a bunch of other things, right? Um, 
So we're going to do some of the new products, um, but first, I see that Doug is watching. Hi, Doug. We're going to uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that Doug has given us for this week. So is Doug afraid to come in here? Is that what I don't is? think Doug's afraid of anything, actually. Honestly. That's probably true. <clears throat> so we have a couple of a uh, couple of things. Um, one of them is um, is the Jet Proactive new. So the, the uh, product we're going to talk about first is from uh, the great folks at NINA, and it's uh, Jet Pro Active Wear. Active Wear um, actually was an old product that sort of was temporarily discontinued, now it's back. And Active Wear was created for these, these um, high content polyester um, type shirts that everybody is wearing, moisture wicking, moisture management. And so the product um, chemistry is specialized for, for going to synthetic fabrics, specialized for, for major stretching, um, excellent washability on those. Okay, so um, so we're going to do this design right here. This is, uh, I don't know if uh, most of you probably don't know this, but Mobile is known as the Azalea City. Um, so we have like the Azalea Trail Maids, we have the Azalea Trail Run, um, we, we love our Azaleas here. Um, so Doug made me this great design, and we're going to press this on a polyester shirt. So the great thing about this is that you can do this with your inkjet printer. All you need is this transfer paper and an inkjet printer, and you can print on... Um, so this would be normal inkjet, and um, sometimes on our Friday broadcast we don't talk about enough about transfer paper world which is typically using normal inkjet printers or in our, or a, a normal or specialized color laser printer. So this, this is under the, the normal inkjet. And you know, why would you do that? Well, um, maybe you don't have a sublimation. Um, you know, it could be a bunch of reasons, but the bottom line is there's a host of, of a family of papers designed for the inkjet world like the famous Jet Pro Soft Stretch, and um, now the relaunch of the, the uh, uh, Jet Pro Active Wear. So it's it's designed again uh, for major stretching. Stretching. Now, one of the things I wanted to do for myself and, and um, for you folks is is press it to some light colors to see how good it would look on light colors, um, and that's something we'll do on a future show. Um, because everybody always asks, okay, you know, what if it's a light pink, light blue, light uh, yellow, you know, how, how much um, do you see the emulsion layer? So we'll, we'll need to find that out for you and, and will. What's the brand of the t-shirt? So um, I think we probably grabbed um, one of the ones from uh, Vapor. So, um, obviously, there are now a tremendous number of brands of polyester and polyester blend shirts on the market, uh, both performance and sort of normal. Um, we sell Vapor, and Vapor has an incredible line of uh, what we refer to as sublimation-ready shirts. Um, there are a few of the shirts in the Vapor line that are not for sublimation, um, and that's like a black shirt. You can't sublimate to a black shirt and be able to see it. Um, so at any rate, um, the reason I say sublimation ready is because when we sublimate to a shirt, we do it at a high temperature like 375, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, when you do that, um, we're probably doing what, 375 here? 375 or 25 seconds. So 375, 25 seconds, medium pressure. But when we sublimate, uh, we do it at a higher temperature, and we do it longer, typically, say, 45 seconds. The challenge is, if it's a colored, you know, sublimation, you know, polyester shirt, um, at that temperature and dwell time, you will often, on, on brand X shirts, you'll have dyes that come out of the shirt. They actually unsublimate from the polyester and it will stain the transfer and you'll also be able to see where you add heat. So that's why it's so important that you buy your, your sublimation shirts so that they are um, sublimation ready 
and if you can't buy a sublimation shirt for whatever reason, you should always test first. So she's, these are hot fuel um, transfers, and again, this is the inkjet world, um, which is, of course, quite a bit different. Quick question. Um, one, can you guys move your mics up a little bit? YouTube is having a hard time hearing. Um, okay. And then two, Eddie asks if there's any deckling of the edge or pressing pillow for the shirt that you're pressing now. So, no, Eddie, um, no. Uh, or, um, I think David, so you don't have to deckle the edge because, well, I guess I could have. Uh, all right, let's see if that takes care of the YouTube. Sorry about that. Okay. So the question would be, um, is there any technique that you have to deal with when you're, when you're doing an inkjet transfer like this? Um, and typically on cotton, um, there isn't really much you can do. Let's take a look at it. Let's see. I think I should have trimmed it a little more. Probably okay. should have trimmed it. What transfer paper are you using? The Nina Jet Pro Active Wear Ink Jet Transfer Paper. So let me show you the one Doug did me. Did so me. once you wash it, you, you shouldn't be able to see much of the emulsion layer at all. Right now I can see it, but it is not very visible. Um, but after the first washing, um, there, there won't be much left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks, Doug. And thanks, Wanda. Wanda said she likes my outfit. That's cute. Thanks. Um, okay. Uh, Someone just asked what, asked what deckling means. So deckling is where you take the edges of your transfer and you rip it to stop that hard edge. So, um, let's see. So the, um, so you and again, just... we're mixing two subjects. So we've got inkjet transfer, like the cotton shirts and all that, and then we have sublimation. On the sublimation side, um, many years ago, uh, a, a lady taught me a technique, which I'm sharing with you, called deckling, where basically you're tearing the edge so that it's now a feathered edge. There's no hard line like uh, you'd have from a knife. And by doing that, um, you, you, it's very difficult to see the deckled edge um, into the shirt, where if it's a a hard line that's that's you know paper cuts you know it's it's hard and it's gonna um, cause a crease um, I've had um, um, Cheryl Kuchek recently tell me that you could repress over a a uh, crease mark and and you could you could uncrease it so I'm, I'm gonna try uh, her suggestion all right. Um, so Doug also made me a, another T-shirt, and he did this one on our Oki Pro 9541WT. So this is our Oki white printer, and uh, this is really cool. So this is what the transfer looked like uh, before he pressed it. So, so he just printed this directly onto this vellum which is the, the backing, and then he printed this out for me and pressed it. Very impressive. Super cute. Thanks, Doug. So again, two worlds, and we're mixing the two worlds, and I'm sorry for the confusion. So we have the sublimation world, and we have the transfer world. That shirt is from the transfer world using an Oki White toner printer. And you're, you're printing with CMY and then W. In the case of this printer, it's a five station printer, so it has CMYK and then a W for white station. We're using, in that case, we're using what's called a forever low temp paper. And um, it basically is, is an amazing Swiss Army knife for, for apparel decorating. Now it does, it, unlike sublimation, it does surface decorating or sublimation dyes the fabric. All right, um, I saw a question, I think Julia asked me, where did I get the lint roller? I think the dollar store or something like that. I mean, you know, easy peasy. Okay, are you ready? All right, let's do some stuff. So we have, um, like I said, we have a bunch of new products. Um, I need to- your, your tub is full there, young my lady. My tub is full, so. Wow. 
Um, I'm waiting for this to cool down a little bit. So, all right, maybe I should open it up. Okay. And we're going to do our um, live one of these days from a new Hicks oven. We're very impressed with our Hicks oven. It's, it's like a commercial sublimation oven and it would be one step before you would go to a tunnel oven. And uh, Hicks is our provider of these industrial ovens and of the uh, tunnel ovens. All right. Okay, so we did get a bunch of new products in. And the first thing that I want to do for you guys today is our stainless steel wine tumblers. This is SSWG 12-W for the white and SSWG 12-S for the silver. They come in these nice boxes, which I'm going to toss. And, uh, uh-oh, dirty hairy over here. And, yeah. Uh-oh, that's not it. Yes, ma'am. You know, I, I apologize for not giving you a precise oh, answer. So it's it's a Scotch Bright. Okay. Not sponsored, but this is a Scotch Bright lint roller. Um, I stole it from Antoine in the lab, and I mean we probably got it from Walmart or something like that. You know, it's not like we went and special ordered it. It's just a just a large lint roller. So sorry. Um, okay. All right. But I mean, lint rollers are are cheap. You know, so. But I get it. You want more bang for your buck. I understand. All right. So we're going to do the silver one first. And I have these designs. You can see they're curved. So we have a great, um, we have a great template on the website for you. Hopefully it's up. Really do well. They're, they're um, insulated, double walled, um, well constructed, um, and available now. Available now. In stock, ready to go. They're going to I run like the beautiful color. Of, of the silver, you know, it's um, has a to me it has a rich look, and uh, the lids are nice. Yeah, adult sippy cups. You know, so these are going to run you anywhere between six dollars and seven cents to six dollars and thirty-five cents, depending on how many you buy. This is a thirty-dollar item all day long, all day long, without a doubt. Um, I really like these a lot. These are really cute. Um, you know, I, I just love the drinkware. Anytime we can expand on our drink line, I'm, I'm excited. I know you're excited. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So we're just going to put our template on there. I'm going to use my premium gold heat tape. That's not it. How, look at that. Look how many. Okay, so sometimes I'm like, I have no tape. I don't have any tape. And today I have three tape dispensers, so I have plenty of tape. I got tape today. All right, so we're just gonna tape it down the seam and then I'm gonna put a couple of pieces around the top just to secure my transfer. Secure my transfer and then my favorite part. And this is the new part. We have our new shrink bags, shrink wrap film sleeves. I think that's what we're calling them, shrink wrap film sleeves. This is SF79. This comes in a packet of 50. They're gonna run you a little a little under $16. Um, so what's that a piece? 30, 40, about 40 cents each. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. So in theory, you could probably get two out of it, right? If you wanted to, you could cut it, maybe. Okay, so what we're gonna, so what we're gonna do, David loves loves to, to you're, you're ruining my surprise. Oh, sorry. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the top off, and then I'm going to use the top to do a shot glass later on. Okay, so we're just going to cut it. You do want to leave a little bit of extra space because it does shrink, right? And then I'm just going to kind of fold it in. Hmm. Hmm. Shall we, um, you want to... I hope we don't blow a breaker. Here will, you go. We will attempt to... Um, so this is a heat gun that I, 
This is a heat gun that I got at, what would we get? We got it at Harbor, no, we got it at Lowe's for 20 bucks, but I've been uh, hearing a lot of people saying that they have them at Harbor Freight for $9. So, and all you do is you just, just apply the heat to it. It's gonna shrink up. So you wanna make, uh, hold on just a second. You wanna make sure that you get all the wrinkles out. All right. So we have a cool. nice tight, I know, right? And super neat. So we have a nice tight seal. We're going to place it in the oven. Let's go a little bit longer. All right. I'm going to place it in the oven for mm, mm, five minutes. Five minutes. Yes, ma'am. Jennifer, Can you get a tool bleed? no. Um, so we are certainly working on ways to extend the transfer area, um, and we do have some techniques um, that may be happening in the future. But right now, um, we're we're um, showing you what is what is is easy and reliable to achieve. Yeah, and so. Um, so it will sublimate top to bottom for sure, but because, let me show you guys this, because it has this little, you know, this little curvature right here, it's going to be really hard to get a template to fit around this because this part is actually wider than the top or the bottom, so. Um, are you using the premium heat tape? Yes, ma'am, I am using the premium heat tape. Perfect. The um, reason we like the premium heat tape is because we're pushing heat from the other side of the tape and that tape seems to work better. It conducts heat a lot, uh, very well. Do the bags come in different sizes for the other sibling drinkware? So the bags, uh, right now we only have the one size of the bag, um, but we will be expanding the, uh, the, the bag line. But I'm gonna show you guys how uh, we're gonna use this bag to do a shot glass. So. You know. So the answer is that yes, we will have a family of shrink wrap bags, um, and um, because we really love the technique, it works well, um, and we're expanding it to all sorts of things. So this sort of cool. Mm -hmm. Can you use these bags for mugs? Can you use these bags for mugs? Um, I would say that. Um, the, the answer is a sort of no um, in that um, as you, if you shrink wrap around the handle, it's going to tend to lift there and straighten out from the handle, if you know what I mean. And so, um, but stay tuned because we do have um, a other product, another product like shrink wrap that we will be able to achieve that goal. So, Do you add time if you're doing more than one at a time? The answer okay. is, is, the question is, do you add time if you're doing more than one? Yes. Um, and so to an extent, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be documenting your results. Um, and then from there, you can extrapolate on um, how much heat your oven puts out as far as how much heat. I would suspect with this kind of product, um, you probably would not need much um, much extra temperature, if any. Have you tried them in a mug press? Yes. We were not successful putting these in a mug press because it's not very flat. Um, you're welcome to try, um, and if you can come up with a technique, but we, we were not thrilled with the results we, we got off using a mug press. That, Um, okay, so, so what the shrink wrap is doing is giving you that pressure. So like David always talks about time, temperature, pressure. So the, pressure, the, the shrink wrap is giving you pressure uh, on the transfer to, to the mug. So if you have a way that you can fit this super odd shaped 
uh, drink item in your heat press and it gets good contact, then no, you don't need to use a, uh, a shrink wrap bag. But um, I tell you what, if you have a mug press that will fit this, please email me and let me know because we've been looking at all kinds of different things and, and I've yet to find something that's going to fit an odd shape like this. So I've completely lost track of time. I think I have maybe a minute left. We'll see. We'll see. So when you, when you want to do this, you need to get an oven. And um, a convection oven like this or larger is all you need. Um, there are ovens, for instance, um, uh, this one is made by Wolfgang Puck. It's their pressure oven, I believe. And um, other than the size, we, we do like it. Um, wish it was bigger. But ultimately, it needs to be a convection oven, not a toaster. Um, so we ought to be about at our time, you think? I probably. Hey, Finch. Finch is watching, too. Hey, big boy. Oh, oh that's David's uh, son. So, hey, hey, big boy. That's weird when I say it. All right. Let's, hopefully this is Finch, did you time. see Baron? He, I don't think he did. I think he so, just started watching. Oh, well. He knows what he looks like. So when you sublimate stuff, a, a very good way to do your first one is to do a black test, RGB000. Black is the most complex color, it requires the most time and heat. And so if you're going to get a good black, that means you're dialed in. If you overcook black, uh, typically on something like this, the black would turn brown. So that'll be your way to dial things in. You always want to cook things a little bit longer than you need to uh, because uh, ovens and heat presses go up and down in temperature um, as the element turns off, turns on. So, um, uh, but if you document it, then you're good. Um, it's like cooking. You really don't want to undercook food. You want to cook it a little bit more than you need to. Um, to, to make sure it's it's consistent. Um, so we're gonna. Thank you. So um, wow. Yeah. That's a beautiful. We guessed we guessed right. I yeah. guess. Okay. So let me show you guys what this looks like. Cool. So there you go. So and this could be everything from um, something that had graphics on there. Uh, monograms, chevrons, patterns, all the way up to a photograph. Um, could be something uh, for mom, uh, happy Mother's Day kind of gift. Um, um, really could good. be um, something for your um, your next camping trip. You know, it. Um, uh, what do my kids call that kind of camping? Um, glamping. Glamping. That's it. I already knew um, it. And so we 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 do that and, and really enjoy it. So. Um, so I have a, uh, these are, you know, they're not breakable, obviously, because they're made out of stainless steel. So Finch said, bring Baron back. Um, and then Eddie, thank you, Eddie. Eddie said he started a timer for me for five minutes right when I closed the oven. So awesome. thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. That's Eddie. great. Um, all right. So I do have a mug press out here, um, and that's because we have another great piece of drinkware that we're going to do today. Um, By the way, I had one comment, and that is on the... Um, drinkware that Sprite just took out of the oven. I do recommend putting that over a fan and um, cooling it quickly. You do not want to dunk it in water. Um, in fact, um, don't dunk anything in water. Years and years ago, we did recommend it's going to blow when we do that. So okay, we'll just wait. Um, that's fine. We'll wait. So we'll wait. Yeah, that's probably just a tad bit more. Too much. Um, so. Um, so dunking water, depending on the, the temperature of the water, can cause micro fractures in ceramics and the coatings. And so it is uh, much better to just put the um, uh, mug on something like a cool plate, run air across of it to cool it fast. You do need to cool things fast. If you don't, the ink that's in the coating, in the mug, drinkware, continues to stay active. And guess what? Heat rises, and you'll be able to see um, some blurring as the image goes goes up because the inks are moving around. Um, you'll also lose lose a little bit of detail. Um, but so really, you need to cool it, um, you know, quickly. We have some questions. Yes, we 
Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, for the big dog bowl, you can take two shrink wraps and make a makeshift cover for it instead of buying so the question is, is uh, using the shrink wrap on a dog bowl, and what I'd like to do is, is table that question. Um, it has already come up, but we've not had a chance to um, test a couple of ideas we have. And so um, I would say that there is a really, really good chance that uh, the shrink wrap will be coming to the, the dog bowl. Have we No, we're that's that's coming up soon, so I can't run, I can't run this and that at the same time. So we're we're gonna do one thing at a time, um, one thing at a time. Uh -oh. So the question was about the shrink wrap in that one. No, it just had um, we pressed. Have we pressed? It. Had we pressed one. Yeah. yeah. All right. So while we're waiting. Well, we, uh, we didn't. What have we been doing those in the oven then? Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So while we're waiting on that. Let's talk about our new rustic edge uh, coasters and magnets. So we have these great new rustic edge products from the beautiful people at Unisub. And let's press some. So we're going to start with this one right here. This is our rectangular rustic edge magnet. This is U60113. And we're just going to press this. So they've gone to five digits on us. So I know, right? Sorry about that. Um, this was a um, product designed uh, here at Condi and, and fabricated at the, the great folks there. Um, one of the things that I very much enjoy and appreciate is your ideas coming in. And I can't remember where this idea came from, but somebody understood that, that this material, which is hardboard. Hi. Oh, thank you. This material, which is hardboard, is generally laser fabricated. And why not make a rustic edge um, that would be very attractive. And uh, indeed, that's exactly what happened. Um, it really turned out well. So you've got you know, the, the fridge magnets. You've got coasters. Um, um, just an awesome product. By the way, the shrink wrap is not intended to um, uh, be airtight. It's not necessary that it's airtight. For instance, the top, it definitely had a hole in it. It's shrink wrap, so it, all it's doing is anchoring the transfer to the substrate. That's all it's doing, um, and the shrink wrap does that, that amazingly well. And then we want the shrink wrap to um, easily conduct heat. And then last, we want to make sure the shrink wrap, when heated, doesn't stick to anything. And um, we we took a fair amount of time to look at the different one, and that's what we're we're uh, providing for you. That is stunningly gorgeous. Wow. Why not? You know what I mean? So, that's hot. We're going to let this go back up to temperature because I have one more thing I want to do in the oven. Oh. Okay. Um, I know, right? So, okay, I'll tell you what. Let's get it ready. So, would you like to plug the mug press into something else like over here? You know, ovens, you name it. Okay, so we're going to do a shot glass because I'm going to show you. Um, bring the dog back. All right. Okay, so I'm doing our shot 01, and if you guys tuned in, uh, I don't think it was, was it last week? Maybe it was last week that we, no, I think it was the week before that we did a shot 01. So this is our two ounce shot glass, and this is our template for it. And I did like a, I don't know, like a, just a random design, you know. I just think of all the uh, things you can sell shot glasses into, um, probably the wedding market. Uh, with um, a lot of the pre-wedding parties. Mm -hmm. uh, what do they call those where all the ladies get together and march up and down the streets with their little shirts? Or I don't know what you're party. talking about. Bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, um, you know, uh, 21st birthday parties, um, retirement parties. I mean, you It's know. all over the map. And then not only that, corporate, you know, like you have a, a bar, you can start sublimating uh, shot glasses for some of your local bars. We have a lot of local breweries, breweries we here. We do. We have a lot more coming too, which is super fun. Are you a beer drinker? I'm not. Yeah. Uh, no figures. Can you use regular commercial shrink wrap? So the question is, can you use regular commercial shrink wrap? And best I can tell, absolutely not. 
um, it does not handle 400 degrees of heat. All right, David, I'm going to take the camera off of you and I'm going to zoom it in on me. I know. He's Please upset. Do. Well, I tell you what, look, they can see both of us. Okay, so I've got my shot glass here and I just kind of taped it up. Would you stop stealing my thunder? Watch out, that's hot. Okay, and I have this piece of bag that I just, you know, used earlier. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to show you guys why I'm going to cut it here in a second. All right. Okay. Give me the remote control. I'll steer a little bit here. Good luck. Remember, that way is this way, and this way is that way. Yes, yes, yes. yes. See, you already messed up. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So I'm just going to take it, and I have it laid out flat here, and I'm just going to kind of roll it. Make sure it's completely covered. So I'm going to roll it tightly, trim off my excess. I need better scissors. My scissors have glue all in them. All right, I'm going to roll, and then I'm going to tape it down. Okay. So I'm going to use a piece of tape lengthwise and tape it down. So it's pretty snug, right? But I still want to apply some heat shrink or some heat to shrink it. There you go. Mr. Power, please. Yeah, Sam asks, is that an Alabama thing? I've never gone marching. Uh, yeah, I guess we do like second line stuff here, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. David's been married a long time, so he doesn't remember what it's like to have a bachelor or bachelorette party. Uh, uh, barely. I'm Barely. All right. Very, very easy to do this. Super easy. Too and you easy. Could, you could sit there and prepare a gazillion of these in a short time hmm. and just sit there and, you know, load them in the oven and take them out. There you go. All right. So, oh, goodness. All right. So, I've got it nice and taped up, and it's it's tight. Toit. Okay. So we're going to wait for this to heat. Oh, okay, good. We're in. All right, so I'm going to put this in here. Eddie, you ready? Eddie, are you ready? Oh, wait. All right, what time do Zoom you want to use? Zoom me out, Scotty. Okay. Uh, we're going to do this for about 13 minutes. 13 minutes. So 13 minutes starting now. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, so... Here you go, you can unplug me here. I think we're done with the shrink wrap. All right. So the shrink wrap is a, is a thing for now and for the future. I think it will, will greatly change uh, sublimation. So um, it, it, it just, <coughs> it's Excuse like, me. bless you. Thank it's you. like electricity, you know. Who could have thought of all the uses for electricity back in the, time of Edison or Tesla, maybe Tesla could, but... I was going to say. Um, you know, he was a pretty smart guy. Potentially, he was an alien, right, you know? Yeah. But well, at any rate, yeah, actually the shrink was. wrap, uh, like the you know, person was asked with dog bowl, I think they're just incredible number of things. So, bottom line is, um, invest in an oven. Okay. Two questions. Yeah. Um, why so long? Why more time than the wine glass? Okay, so the wine glass is stainless steel and the shot glass is ceramic. So the stainless steel is gonna conduct that heat a lot better, that ceramic is a lot thicker, and it takes a, uh, takes a lot longer for the heat to, to get all the way through it. Is that correct? It is, it is. Perfect. Sweet. So can they use a convection oven from Walmart? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, quite, by the way, that's Sorry. a great question about ceramic versus stainless steel. Um, you know, just make sure it truly is a convection oven. Um, look it over. Um, we have not done an exhaustive search of brands out there, and I really don't know, but the biggest issue with convection ovens is simply how much can you put inside the oven. Um, and in fact, um, we're so excited about this. I have some friends that are um, big into sublimation in China, and they've said, you know, uh, let me show you the ovens that, that they're using there that um, 
are a little bit more practical than than the small like tabletop oven. So I am going to um, understand what's happening uh, with the ovens in China um, to see if it's something we should do here. Any idea on price? How much they could spend? You know, I think this one is certainly under two hundred dollars for Wolfgang Puck pressure oven. Um, maybe like one seventy nine or something like that. Okay. Um, all right. So, so we uh, I, I prepared my rustic edge magnet. I just put a couple pieces of tape on it, and then I'm going to press it image face down, substrate face up for sixty seconds, four hundred degrees, medium pressure. Okay. All right. And then I'm, I got a couple more. So. Now, you know, the part we've been doing here, just to always clarify, this is the sublimation domain, um, and um, you need a sublimation printer. Um, but there's a little caveat. We're having more and more people that are, are calling us, and they don't have a sublimation printer, and they're still doing sublimation. Okay. How are they doing it? With our artist free markers. Yes. So the, the markers have become a completely different tangent, um, dimension, universe um, for folks. And we even have folks now that buy the markers. They're doing sublimation prints using their sublimation printer, but having, for instance, an area of personalization for folks to color in. And it's the adults that are coloring. It's the kids that are coloring. Um, so the markers are, are just darn amazing. Um, so, so don't forget the markers. I would tell you how much do our markers cost? I think they're like about thirty. Thirty five or something. Um, everybody out there ought to get them a set of markers. Um, you you should be able to easily find a way to make money with those those markers. They're um, they're they're just amazing. Easy to use, obviously. Um, you do need to remember that if it's a substrate that you normally would mirror, you need to write in mirror image if you're doing numbers and letters. Oh, very nice. <laughs> so, this has got some vintage artwork on it. So, how much would something like that sell for? Okay, so my husband and I were really big into magnets, right? We like magnets. Um, and, you know, something like this, uh, if it's got original artwork on it, I would pay anywhere 10 to $15 for it. And okay. these are going to cost you, I think they're like around like 94 cents. Okay. Like a dollar, nine, a dollar, 94 cents, something like that. So this is cool. I did the American Gothic. Um, and then what you would do is go to uh, like a Hobby Lobby and then or here's the something edge. and get the, um, get the magnets for the back of them. Yeah, really cute. Uh, so. we eventually, we'll, we'll sell magnets and we may even sell them now, but um, that's certainly a source for magnets. Yep. So we have, and we have a couple different shapes. So that's the rectangular one. That's U60113. I'm pressing the house one. That's U60105. And she could press to the capacity of the press all yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of stuff. Now, just let's look at the um, uh, coaster for a second. So the coasters are, are corked back. And so, so Sprite's got her little trick. What's your little trick on these? Um, well, I like to, you know, put my logo on the back of them, kind of like we did here with, with this one. Cool. So we discovered um, that you could sublimate a little bit on the back. And you can, and this is the cork, so makes a good coaster, of course. And you can sublimate, for instance, your... Um, company info, the reorder information. Um, you could even sublimate on the back something that's appropriate for who's buying the coaster. Um, could be the name of the art that's on it. Um, you know, um, if you're doing it as a promotional product, could be something regarding the company that um, you're doing it for. Uh, we're doing these uh, 400 degrees for 60 seconds. So this one's cute. So this falls Pineapples. under what we refer to as the uh, Unisub hardboard materials. And you're in that, um, you know, if you put a bunch under your press, you're in the minute and a half range um, kind of thing. All right, and then this is our circular one. Circular. Uh, this is 
U60106. All right. Okay. So what I what I think I'm going to do personally is um, my oldest son um, just recently got engaged, and um, so we're we're very happy about that. So I'm going to suggest to him um, to suggest to his uh, new new bride to do a save the date um, fridge magnet using this uh, rustic edge product. So I think it'd make a great save the date kind of product. What do y'all think? So. Definitely, yeah. All right. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as you like this design, we can do other shapes, other sizes. So um, just a great concept to run with. Okay. Eddie asks if Finch is getting married. No, it's not Finch. It's, um, Finch is uh, my second... Uh, our, or our second child, and uh, but it's my oldest, which is Trey, and um, um, great kid. So okay, yeah, Finch. When are you getting married? Yeah, I hear crickets. Do you hear crickets? All right. I think Finch loves the life of a bachelor. So I don't blame him. Okay, guys. So I did this cute. Uh, just so one of the advantages of having these made out of the Unisub materials is it's incredible quality, it's clarity, it's color pop, um, it's ease of use, and uh, the best part I think is it's all made here in the United States. Can you press several magnets in the heat press at once? Hey, yeah. You yes. can press several magnets in the heat press at once. Um, I was just Now the magnets are not quite applied to these yet. You would apply them after you press, but to answer your question you can fill the press up with these um, and as long as you have enough even pressure you're, you're good yeah so I'm actually doing both of the coasters at the same time so the round coaster is u60114 the square coaster is u60107 so the rules of pressing multiple things at the same time um, is easy with one caveat all the things you put in the press that you're pressing at the same time need to have the same thickness um, and ideally be made of the same thing like cardboard. So if you had, you know, you, know, you, you really couldn't press um, uh, one of these rustic coasters with one of the fridge magnets because I believe they're actually a different thickness. The fridge magnets are actually thicker. That's correct, yes. So good, good, those final Jeopardy questions, right? That's right. Cheryl said she put QR codes on the magnets as a promo. Beautiful. Uh, fantastic. So Cheryl's um, uh, comment was to put a uh, QR code on the back. Um, great idea. Yeah, these Unisub products, they just, they look so good. The colors are so yeah, great. Yeah, what a beautiful, gosh, they look so good. Great color pop. Okay. Eddie, how much time do I have left? I bet we're done. Uh, yeah, well, how much did you say you were going to like cook it for? 13, 13 minutes. Yeah. So, let's, let's so go typically, a ceramic mug in a oven, you would go 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, and, you know, if you put a bunch in there, you would need to run your time up. Um, potentially 30 seconds to a minute for each additional one. That's Say right. again. I think I think it's about it's pro, I think it's ready. Yeah. Will you and, and plug this in and plug back. Yeah. The um the, the time in the oven is really directly related to how much heat the oven puts out. Just like the oven, a really nice oven will cook your food faster. Uh, same with doing sublimation. So you really cannot say a, a precise number to use. Um, uh, is it on? Oh, I got you. There we go. Um, right. So we're turning on our trusty George Knight DK3 mug press. Uh, this mug press is for, for straight mugs, like your traditional 11 ounce, 15 ounce. Whoa. What? Nice. What? Nice. Couple questions? Yes. Uh, it's a little late, but what did you say to do with the hot cups instead of dunking in water? Um, so the question is, how do you cool your drinkware? after you take it out of the oven or mug press. 
and you want to put it, it across a that's beautiful sprite you want to put it nice. across a, a fan a nice powerful fan to cool it fast um, when I do it I use my um, trusty cool plate which is sitting right over here um, because the cool plate will pull heat from the bottom push air across it and, and cool it fast um, you know a lot of people still dunk them in in sort of lukewarm water um, and because I'm one of the folks that kept saying that but for certainly today I would recommend to um, cool them with a fan we will be in Irving next week um, so the show for for next week is is um, Thursday Friday and Saturday of next week okay while we wait on this to heat up which this does not take long at all to heat up um, last week I was going to press our new I don't know if you guys saw this so this is the square coaster and the round one those are absolutely gorgeous they do look really nice love that edge right um, I know. you know it's amazing how you add value to products and I tell everybody there's three components that I know of for value number one is the substrate itself how good does it look how much how valuable is it and the rustic edge lends so much um, additional value in my opinion number two is the artwork how good does the artwork look um, and there's uh, talented people like Sprite that's that's just not one of my um, things that I, I sort of inherited um, and uh, the more artistic the better and then number three is your selling environment um, how good does it look are you upscale or are you flea market kind of thing so upscale being better we do. Um, so it's spelled with a K, uh, cool plate, um, just um, a great product. I would say that um, we use them around here, you know, every minute of every day um, to quickly cool products. I guess I can grab it, just show you sort of what it looks like since it's right here beside me. Do, 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 do. So this is a cool plate, um, and um, basically it's a bunch of fans, and you plug it in, you turn it on, and this top um, just draws the heat away like a what we'd call a heat sink, and uh, you can see sort of the name there. Um, great product, highly recommended, um, and relatively inexpensive, certainly would last a lifetime. Yeah. You may do that while you... Oh. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right, guys. So we've got the, the three magnets. So this is the um, rectangular magnet. You may want to see the actual edge. You can try. Let's see. I think that, that'll work. You can see that. Yeah, I like that. There Looks go. good, yeah. All right. Here is the round one. And then... You can see if you, the back of it kind of looks a little better. If we put it, um, I yeah, bet. a white paper. In, yeah, white paper. There you go. You can see it's kind of, yeah, yeah, it's rustic. All right. And then, um, so those two are rustic. Now, the house one is not. It's just square, but it's, or house shaped. <laughs> it's, not, it's not square, I don't know. I don't know what do, you, what do you call that it's a trapezoid one two three four five it's kind of, it's a pentagon a pentagram pentagon not a pentagram pentagram is a different thing um live on facebook right okay so there's that and you can see the the back of it and then here is i love my little koi fish so everything is in stock right yes in stock ready to go ready to be sold and imprinted and make a bunch of money off of okay all right okay so great um, for spring great for any time here you go here's your papers back all right um so last week 
Um, I went to press this and I did not I did not print out my design. So this week we're going to do both the new linen pot holder, which is JDW754, and our linen oven mitt, which is JDW753. So I'm going to show you guys how beautiful this looks to match. And first thing I'm going to do is lint roll it. I'm using a piece of Teflon because the back of it is silver quilted and it, it does get a little sticky. So I'm just going to put it on my Teflon, cover it, press it. Yeah, if you don't know, we're very anti-Teflon around here and only use Teflon for just a handful of products. Um, these are our products that it's necessary. If you don't use Teflon, the silver will simply stick to your cover paper. That's right. And so I've talked about this before. So this tag will sublimate. So what I like to do is just cover it with a piece of tape. It just kind of gives it a nice little finished look. We should have a show on will it sublimate. It's like the uh, well, the Saturday Night Live when they used to do will it blend and they would drop the phone in or something there. And I watch a I watch a YouTube show and they do uh, will it taco and they and they taco they try to make tacos out of things and some of it's pretty gross but will it taco will it taco it's a good mythical morning shout out to Rhett and Link I hope you're watching they're not they're not but that would be really cool um, all right so just prospirate it we're gonna stick it on there cute little spring design we're gonna press this. 60 seconds, medium pressure, image face down, substrate face up, Teflon on the bottom. So you may have noticed a Sprite used Pro Spray. Pro Spray and heat tape are the two ways that we uh, anchor the transfer to the substrate. Um, it just, you, which one we use depends, of course, on the substrate, but generally speaking, on soft substrate, heat tape is not ideal. Do you spray the transfer? So when you use Pro Spray, you spray the transfer. You never want to spray the product. Why are we anti-Teflon? Um, Teflon is pure evil. That's why. Um, well. So so Teflon has a couple of things that are are really bad. Number one is if used on top, it's a moisture barrier. Moisture is our evil enemy, and moisture turns into steam and it ruins our transfers. Number two is if you use Teflon on the bottom you can get uh, stray sublimation ink on the Teflon and it will carry it over to the next thing you press um, and so just don't use Teflon. Um, if you're going to use Teflon on the bottom because you just do, make sure you always put a cover sheet over the Teflon to make sure that uh, sublimation ink cannot come in contact with um, the Teflon. So if we're going to do a bunch of these, um, because you're doing sublimation, you're going to get some amount of, of sublimation on there, um, then you're going to want to wipe the Teflon off. So if she was to pull it over, you probably got some sublimation on there already. You can even see it. Bit. And yeah. that will transfer to the next thing you press. So you would want to wipe down the Teflon with denatured alcohol. Okay. But in a pinch, I'm going to use the shirt that Doug gave me. Sorry, Doug. Okay. Yeah, it will wipe off. It does. All right, so now we're going to do the oven mitt. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to pro uh, lint roll it. We nice. love these um, oven mitts and the pot holders. Oh, they're great. They really are. All right, and then I'm going to pre-press it, heavy, medium heavy pressure. What a beautiful product. For like maybe five or ten seconds. I know, it's, it looks really good. Doesn't smell that great, but... It smells okay. Yeah. We're not in it for the smells. That's weird. Okay. Pro spray it again. I like that I got a love when I said we weren't in it for the smells. That's... Yeah, some products smell. I can't smell anything on this product nothing at all but like on mouse pad materials when you're pressing it well wow that's a different story i, I we were pressing um huge um, um mouse pad sheets the other day for um, a charity project i'm working on and uh these are big 
ultimately they would turn into mats that you put on the floor for kids and 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 um, a game and um, the smell was very much like sort of seafood smell and I thought for sure somebody here who had a um, brought in some seafood like shrimp or crawfish or something I go what in the world is that smell but it turned out to be the um, nets. What is denatured alcohol? Ah, great question. Thank you for asking. Um, uh, denatured alcohol is the kind of alcohol you buy at the paint store or paint department. And um, uh, inexpensive, you know, to get. So the kind of alcohol you buy at the store is, is called isopropyl alcohol, like at the drugstore and it is mostly water. So when we're cleaning printers, like cleaning the belt on your printer, cleaning the encoder strip, encoder wheel, um, we, recommend, uh, we recommend denatured alcohol. Why are the oven mitts only available for one hand? You're a lefty. Well, that's a darn good question. I, I don't think we've been asked that question yeah, before, I'll... and um, I do not have the answer to that question. Um, but but uh, what a what a what an outside thinking person you are. Um, it's not for a lack of trying, I promise. Um, great. So um, you know, it's it's a right-handed world I live in, I guess. Uh, me being a left-handed world, a left-handed person, I, I very much should have thought of that question. Wow, uh, great question. We had really good questions today. Um, All right, guys, let me show you what I did. So this is really cute. I just did a cute little spring theme. It says, hello, spring. So really, really cute. Just Those nice are pastel colors to begin with, but yeah. if you put vibrant colors, they're going to be get as vibrant as you can imagine. But I mean, this is great. This is a beautiful matching set. I don't know if you guys can see the texture of the linen in there, YouTube. And I love the feel and the texture. Super cute. Okay. All right. Just got all kinds of stuff to press today. Press and do. Okay, so really super excited about these. This is our SS Mug 15-W. These are our stainless steel coffee mugs. How cute is this? Comes in this nice box, which I'm going to throw away. And we're going to press this in our DK3 for 365 degrees, two minutes. Now, if you do not have a DK3, this is our die wrap 05. It works just as well. You're gonna do this if you don't have the DK3, you can use the die wrap 05. You can do it in the oven 365 for five minutes. So, but we're gonna use the DK3 because it's quick and we love it. It's great. Now, I know we've already been asked the question, can you use the shrink wrap film, and what would be your answer? So, yeah, you can. You can. But what's going to happen is where the handle is, you're going to end up getting a gap. And you know what? While we're pressing this, I'll, I'll actually show you what it's going to look, what's going to happen if you do shrink wrap on this. So I've just got my image taped on there. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, protective paper. Always use protective paper in your mug press. So, Diane, the time and temp on the pot holder in the oven mitt is 400 degrees for 60 seconds with a 5 to 10 second pre press, medium to heavy pressure. So, you want a nice, good pressure. Only 10% of the population is left handed. Did you know that? That sounds like something you would know. You know what I've, I've found... In but I'll tell you, most presidents have been left-handed. So I, I was just going to say that um, in, in teaching yoga, I've noticed that a lot of the people that do yoga are left-handed as well. No, which is curious. interesting. Yeah. I have to, for my yoga class, I'll have to look around and see if I can discern if they're left or right-handed. There you go. All right. So you're going to show yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's show. Okay. Show you what it looks like. So I have this one that is... We're just not, we're just going to. Got a nice lid, by the way. 
Um, feels really, good, looks good. Really heavy duty, double walled, insulated, just great product. Now you can sublimate all the way to the bottom, but you've got a gap where the part attaches. Yeah, it. but that, you know, it, it still looks pretty good. It, so. it still looks good if you go all the way down. Mm -hmm. What's this? What? What? What's that? Do they, do they really flatten out? Does what really flatten out? Probably your. I'm not sure. Okay. Hey, Suna, what, what, are you, what are you talking about, Suna? What you mean, girl? All right. Uh, we have Let's to plug get this back. Yeah, plug this back asks, in. Why does the paper burn through her cup? Ah, so um, it means you're overcooking it. So um, the question is, you know, why does my paper turn brown? those kinds of things and and ultimately when you do an oven and I'm sure it's with our oven here we have an internal thermometer you can see it back there well you really can't but it's there so it's very very important you know your temperature and so uh, burning paper is a strong indicator that you're either running too hot or too long or both all right guys so show you real quick so you can see that it does so if you wanted to do just like a monogram on the front that would be great but what's going to happen is you have this huge gap right here I don't know if you... pause oh man y'all what look Very at nice. that two I just did sorry that's how excited I am. This was two minutes in the DK3 or five minutes in the oven. This mug will go $40 easily, without a doubt. You can see it's double wall insulated. It has a really nice lid like David was talking about. It's heavy in your hand. Um, it fits in most cup holders. Super cool, super cool. Regarding that mug, if you cut a split to the handle, I think you need in the... So if you, if you cut the shrink wrap, it's no longer shrink wrapped. Right. So, um, but stay tuned because in the near future we will talk about how to do this with, we'll call it, what do we want to call it? Version 2, which we're More not. like kind of version 12. Version 12, okay, maybe, version, 12, version 12, something like that. But we have some ideas for the future of how to do this. We always have ideas. Ah. So, well, you can see, um, I, I thought I had a blank one. So it's, I mean, it's still, you know, it's, it's flatter than it was, but it has this really nice, um, I guess like a Sherpa kind of interior. And so, I mean, it's still, you know, people I love a lot. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, you, hey, wait a second okay. now. Hold on. Here, here's Sprite's genius idea. If you buy the set, then you can have the pot holder for this hand and the oven mitt for this hand, and then it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Um, Tracy, again, with the cutting the shrink wrap, what if you did it like you did the shot glass? So you cut the, the shrink wrap. So, mm, um, First of all, we're still learning here, yeah. and so I thank you for your questions. And I did see somebody say, like, you could maybe if you, like, cut it around the handle and taped it, maybe. Um, but, the, huh. so, you know, if you... <laughs> I, I, uh, we'll try it. I think uh, these are great ideas. But you have to keep in mind that, that it, it does shrink. So, you know, you have to have a, enough of an overlap that, you know, when it starts to pull taunt, that it's not going to completely you know, pull apart. So, all right, really so quick. Learning and, and uh, great suggestion. All right, guys. It's Thank that, you, Tracy, right? Tracy. It's yeah. that time where we play guess the weight. Let's talk about the rules. One guess per person. Only your first guess will qualify. Guesses are expressed in pounds. Example, 1.2, 3.6, 4.8. Mm -hmm. Winning weight will be the first guess closest to, but not over to total combined weight of the products. Two prizes, one on Facebook, one on YouTube. Free shipping in the continental U.S. You'll receive a blank of everything I pressed today. And that is pot holder, oven mitt, magnets, coasters, shot glass, 
15 ounce mug, silver wine glass, white wine glass, and two of our shrink wrap film bags. So, how much? Tell me how much it weighs. I'll ship it to you. That's it. Go. Okay. While we're waiting, let's give some other stuff away. So every week I ask for you to send me a product review and I pick someone and I give them $25 in Fondy credit. This week it is Katie from Katie Jean Designs. She reviewed our pro spray. She said it's perfect for my sublimation transfers to stay in place. Love that it's tacky enough to be repositioned. And then she actually gave a tip on the sprayer clogging. She said, I use 100% acetone to rub on the nozzle to clean up any buildup. Otherwise, if there is buildup, the spray will sputter and leave watermarks on the image and ruin the transfer. So Katie, thank you so much. We'll, I'll be Thanks, giving Katie. you, uh, I'll send, your rep will be sending you an email where you can have uh, $25 in Condi cash. Guys, go leave me a product review. I, it's a really easy way to earn Condi credit and you know, you could be our next winner. Also, I have a product, a, a client gallery winner. So this is our last week of this, no, I'm sorry, we have till the end of the month, you have a chance to enter our monthly themed contest. And that is show us your best spring themed item. You have a chance to win 200, 100, or $50. After that, we're moving to a quarterly contest where we're going to be giving out even more prizes. But you can still win $25 in Condi credit per week. All you have to do is go to our website, go to our client gallery, upload your images for a chance to be entered in our just weekly gallery. And this week, our winner is Ailey's Treasure, Jacqueline Del uh, Delanian, and she did this really cute serving tray um, oh that's beautiful isn't that nice and like... i think um these folks have 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 really shared a lot of uh, what they've come up with with it and i think that's just thrilled it thrills me um puts a special place in my heart when people will share um what they're doing with others so that's thank right. you Congratulations, uh, you'll be receiving an email and you'll have $25 in Condi credit. So guys, go, uh, like I said, you have, um, I think, another week to upload your best. The, the wine glass, the, 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 you know, white, I want to see that. That is so beautiful. That is nice. Wow. Where do we send a review of a product? So uh, to send a review of a product, you just go to condi.com, uh, condi go to the product, and um, and click on the review tab at the bottom and leave a review. That's it. And the the um, the tabs there at the bottom, you know, instructions, videos, templates, um, and the client gallery. That's a great way to get ideas about, you know, what what other folks are doing with that product. You can also go to the client gallery and just, you know, screen after screen after screen. There's got to be you know, hundreds of screens. Of, of, of your contribution, so thank you. Will the shrink wrap work with a 17 ounce water bottle? Yes, the shrink wrap does work with our water bottles. That is a superb use of the shrink wrap. Yeah. And um, we, we should have mentioned that, um, but it's a great use. You know, um, really when you're doing your, if you did a water bottle and a mug press that's designed to have something with a handle, you need to really turn it halfway through so you can go all the way around. But with shrink wrap and an oven, um, you are absolutely have a larger transfer area. And of course, shrink wrap makes things so easy to do. It does. So not only our water bottles, but any of our handleless drinkware. So our Tum Tins, um, our Cup 17 SS's, our Tum 450 SS's, um, our coin banks, Anything without a handle can be done with the shrink wrap. And then we've got, well, you know, some of the polymer stuff you may have, yeah, is the, that what you're mentioning? Yeah, the Cup 17. That, you know, we started off doing the, the sleeves, which are semi-reusable. Um, now you can do it with the shrink wrap also. As so well. Cool. 
Yeah. What's, the, what's the polymer um, The Tum, Tum 450 SS. I love that product. I do too. Um, These are super cool. So you're talking about a great Father's Day, Mother's Day kind of gift. Um, this is it, you know, because this is the part you sublimate. Um, you put this in your, um, your oven. It's an oven-only product. Um, and you could, you know, definitely, uh, you know, okay, so do, when we do these right, um, do we, we don't put an insert inside. No, you no. don't have to. We originally so, started with the insert, but then we realized that it, you don't have to do it, so. So, um, you know, the, the, I know the sleeves work. We probably just need to verify the shrink wrap works, but probably does. Oh, without, yeah. yeah. Can you lay things down in the oven, or do you need to stand them up? So, the question is, can you lay things down, or do you need to stand them up? And, you know, in a pinch, yes, but what's going to happen is you're going to scorch the bot. You're going to scorch the area that is that is laying down because anything that's laying down is really conducting a lot more heat than the ambient uh, temperature of the oven. So um, you know you're going to want to stand it up. So would it help to put a piece of Nomex there? I've used the um, the heat conductive rubber in the okay. past when I've had to do it, and it, and it works okay. You know, I think I, mm, I thought I had one in here that was, that I had burned, but I don't. So that is the challenge with a small oven. You quickly get hooked on sublimation in an oven and you, you, you find out you don't have a lot of area to do lots of products. Any more questions? By the way, never use the oven for food. You know, once you use it for sublimation, that's what you need to keep doing. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for being with us, and happy Friday. Everybody have a good weekend. And those that um, are in the Texas area, we look forward to seeing you next week as Sprite and I teach our class. And, of course, we have our trade show and the kiosk and all the great folks. Who's, uh, who's going from sales? Do you remember? Um, Stephen, uh, Wendell, and Ted, maybe? Ted. Ted. So Ted Lawson, Wendell Sawyer, and Stephen Davis. Um, a great, great crew, that's for sure. So hold on. Do we have a winner? Oh, yeah. Well, we do. Okay. Um, our Facebook winner is Raymond Gobernat with a guess of 2.6 pounds. Can you spell that last name for me? Uh, I doubled it down real fast. Well, right. congratulations, Raymond. So, Raymond, you won. The, you, you guessed 2.6 pounds. The answer was 2.7 pounds. I'm not going to try to uh, pronounce your last name. Um, I'll be sending you an email um, next week, and you'll be receiving all this beautiful stuff. Who's our uh, YouTube winner? Tanya Anton. Anton. Girl, this is the second time she's won. A guess of 2.7, which is the weight. Tell me, all right, so Tanyu has won again on YouTube. I think she's got some kind of Las Vegas system or hey, something, man, it's, right? You know, but it's, hey, it's whatever, whatever works. It's whatever. So whatever Tanyu, works. congratulations. Congratulations. We'll be sending you some more stuff. All right, guys. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, off topic. Is the stand, the heat press is on the same as a DC-16 would go on? Yes. So the, the stand is a little bit of a Lego multi-purpose stand. It has holes for um, several different presses. Um, definitely the stand is, is uh, very well made and highly recommended. So you can use it for the DK20S, DC16, and probably a few other presses. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Bo, so the weight was 2.7 pounds. All right. Yeah. Thanks, stand, guys. Su stand is some assembly required. Love you, Mom. Take care. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.